And when the Europeans arrived on the horizon, they asked our ancestors here, oh, what do you call this place? And our ancestors didn't respond by saying the barbecue area. <laughs> the different renditions of the word Cambry came back, Cambry, Nyambri. And basically in language, the word Nyambri means uh, the sleep, the camp, the meat. So I'd like to start by saying, uh, you might, I'm going to share a couple of images of country and different renditions. I also like to, I'm a custodian uh, of site stories and country and I was born here. Uh, the name Canberra was gazetted in 1834 under the New South Wales colonial government uh, as Canberra Station uh, by JJ Moore here. And I also like to acknowledge my other multiple Aboriginal ancestors here from, the, from country, including the Pajong uh, Gundungra, Southern Gundungra, uh, from the Yass region, also the powerful Walla Baloa, Ngunnawal speaking country uh, here as well, but also my Wiradjuri ancestry. And our welcome to countries are made in the spirit of peace, in the spirit of, of peace and a desire for harmony for all peoples of the modern ACT and surrounds. And our main aim is to establish an atmosphere of mutual respect through the acknowledgement of our ancestors and the recognition of our rights to declare our special place in the pre and post contact of the region. And as local custodians, we warmly welcome uh, everyone now living and working on our ancestral country. So we talk about country, uh, when we talk about country, we use the word Dara, but also Nurumbungu. Uh, our people through law and custom uh, through law and custom hold cultural knowledge uh, which connects us to our country, a powerful connection to country. We continue to maintain our deep respect for our culture and heritage. So some of these images, this image is my, of my great-great-grandfather, Yuri Yarra. You may have heard of Yuri Yarra out to the, the west here at, at Guri on the Brindabellas. My, my ancestor, Henry, he was a uh, multi, essentially a, a Wogaloo multilingual speaker from country. And he was a farmer, a black tracker, a stockman. He, he was many things. And he was the first generation after the arrival of Europeans on the country. So as younger, as younger generation of people, uh, we have great responsibility to look after our children. We all want to see our children grow up in a society that honours, respects and acknowledges the Indigenous people of our country. And from our ancestral country, we, we believe we're entitled to a greater share in the wealth and prosperity of our lands as well. And part of that is the, you know, the acknowledgement is important. We, we have to fight, we have to fight uh, tooth and nail for every inch of recognition on our, on our ancestral lands today here in the ACT. Um, so we must remember, so looking after country is very important. So places like uh, Pialago, Jalagung, uh, Malongolo here, a uh, couple come along, the Murrumbidgee, the Gudra, Digby, the Goobagandra rivers, all the land, uh, the mountains, it's all connected, not just environmentally, but also spiritually. So we, our signature is in the land, not just our DNA. So we must remember under the concrete and the steel, the cities and towns, there's a rich indigenous history, a powerful, compelling history that goes back 65,000 years. And which is now a shared history that belongs to all of us. And we all have a responsibility in looking after country, no matter where we, where we come from. And a lot of people have come to Canberra over the years to make a living, uh, to study, you know, to pay a mortgage for a better life. And we respect that and acknowledge all people on country. And we talk about the, the, the law of the land. The law of the land says the following things. You must respect and honour all people in all parts of the country. Be patient, be gentle, be polite, empower the people, hold fast, and people will respect you. And respect everything living and growing. That's very important as well. Uh, so looking after the land is very important. Um, so in conclusion, I'd just like to say, in language we say uh, Gurubari. The word Kurubari is corrupted from the word Gurubari uh, here in the southeast. And Gurubari means welcome and uh, Wurugawari means thank you. So on behalf of our elders and our matriarchs and patriarchs, which, who we always acknowledge, and in the spirit of reconciliation, I say Gurubari uh, and Wurugawari. Welcome. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Paul. I mean, what Paul has um, gifted us in giving us a welcome is um, mirrored across the country, really. And it's, it's basically this notion, but more than a notion, the importance of ensuring that we have respect, mutual respect, respect for all people and respect for the land. And underpinning all of this is that the expectation, the responsibility that we look after our children now and into the future. This is essentially what, what this, this forum is about. Respect for all of us, respect for country, respect for the futures of our children, along with the need to remember. Uh, we need to know what the past looked like in order to understand where we stand today and where we need to go into the future. So thank you, Paul. My regards to your beautiful mum, Matilda, and family. So can you join me again in thanking Paul? So I would like to acknowledge a couple of people with us today. Um, but first I want to start by acknowledging Loacha O'Donoghue herself, uh, a woman who gifted her name to this institute. And it comes with great pride but also great responsibility to honour uh, Loacha and her name now and into the future. Our Chair Pat Anderson, who all of you will know, um, and um, the board, the Loacha Institute board. Uh, I also want to acknowledge that we have some special guests in the room today. Um, I, I don't think he likes being called His Excellency. Um, I, I kind of think of him as a, as a mate. Um, Paul Madison, the High Commissioner of Canada. Uh, Andrew Tung, Associate Secretary from the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet. Andrew, thank you for being here. Um, good friend Kate Latimer, CEO of uh, the Crane Lana program. Uh, we've got some deadly speakers and I'll introduce them in, in a moment. Uh, and uh, a man who knows a lot about how the business works in this town, one of our, our good friends and colleagues, uh, Mr. Geoffrey Richardson, who will be our rapporteur today. I'm proud to be the CEO of the Lowitcher Institute to, to showcase three research projects that we have uh, funded and discuss the ways that these can be translated into better policy and practice. What sets our research apart is that the themes and questions privilege Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities from the very beginning. This leads to stronger methodologies and stay true to communities' priorities, as well as relevant to community priorities. Of our current funding, 40 of 41 research projects, 87% of those projects have chief investigators who are Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. This, this is kind of the direct opposite to uh, those Indigenous um, labelled projects within the National Medical Health and Medical Research Council. We have 87% of ours with chief investigators as Indigenous. The NHMRC uh, have about 13%, I think it is, or 17%. Um, this, this speaks to the very issue um, at hand about how do we ensure that uh, not only the research is community identified and driven uh, but the, the, the research questions, but the research itself and then translation. So the uni unique starting point um, and process leads to different research outcomes. That's what the Lower Tree Institute is about, sometimes complementing the way in which research is done, but at other times uh, disrupting existing frameworks for better outcomes for our people. In all that we do, we're very clear that the positive impact, the benefit of our work, must squarely be uh, for our people, first and foremost. 
We have uh, three presentations today. Uh, Margaret Kelleher and Fran Eads will be launching a report on their research on evaluation frameworks to improve Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander health. Uh, Hannah Bullock and Scott Goringe will be presenting their research on deficit discourse and Indigenous health, reframing discourse and strengths-based approaches. We hear a lot about discourse and strengths-based approaches. Uh, this is really important stuff. Uh, Kerry Arabina, Torres Strait Islander woman, um, researcher, uh, has been stuck in Melbourne and hoping to get here in time. Um, so I think, uh, uh, I think a fog might have come, uh, come over Tullamarine Airport. So they're on their way. Um, and Kerry will be sharing insights and themes from research around service integration for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander early childhood development. And uh, you'll hear from Kerry, hopefully she'll be here in time, but uh, the importance of, of centering our business around Aboriginal young people and families. 